for this first question. Um, my project used conventions like symbolic props, and by that I mean the bat and bag. Um, they were represented as iconic symbols throughout the story of danger and threat, um, setting the tone for the film's suspenseful atmosphere. And by that I mean the bag and bat, those are very scary objects usually. And in here, they were especially used to just evoke that sense of fear for the audience. Um, as well as even in certain points, using the bag to cover the kidnapped person's head, the kidnapped person's head added a sense of mystery and urgency, which drew the viewers further into our story, which is really what you want out of an opening sequence, and that's what we we uh we strove for. Later, in the ending of the sequence, um, the bandana and glove were used as tools of concealment and intimidation. Uh, further emphasizing the sinister nature of the kidnapper's actions. And by that I mean, um, like, ending off the story with the people putting on the bandana and putting on the gloves, it really shows what what horrors those people could have done to the victim in that, in that environment, and that's what we were going for. The visual storytelling um, was another convention we used. And by that I mean I leveraged lighting and even framing techniques to create a, a sense of claustrophobia and isolation within the confined spaces of the car and garage. I mean, the garage was completely cluttered, there were objects everywhere, the floor wasn't clean, and this is really to just evoke that eeriness and dirtiness, which shows claustrophobia and isolation aspect. Um, subtle camera movements were also incorporated in angles, obviously, throughout the car scene, and even on top of uh, still images to show and heighten the tension um, and emphasize key moments of the surprise. Um, character dynamics were established, such as power dynamics through the physical actions of the characters, uh, with the kidnappers completely controlling the, the victim. The, the victim was walking and had no control over whether or not um, he got dragged into that van or not. He was unconscious then even, that's what we were going that we were trying to portray. And that just completely shows how the, the victim was helpless in that scenario. Um, another char character dynamic was the contrast between the dark, um, menacing attire of the kidnappers and the vulnerability of the kidnapped person. It underscores the imbalance of power and it highlighted the film's exploration of societal issues such as violence and victimization, which is really what we were striving for. Um, challenge conventions. Um, I subverted audience expectations first off by presenting a minimalist narrative that really relied on what you were seeing and not on what was going on in the, the vocal or dialogue um, areas of the film. And by that I mean the only scene that there was really dialogue was inside the car. And that was only to explain what was going on and, and evoke the storytelling aspect more. So this really um, showed how I subverted um, traditional character development things and in favor of focusing on the immediate stakes and emotional impact of the scenario, of the kidnapping scenario. Um, to, to answer the, the second part of the question, um, there was representation of social issues such as we explored the vulnerability and, and uh, we, we, well, first off, through the portrayal and the portrayal of a kidnapping scenario, the film confronted the audience with the harsh realities of violence and vulnerability in society. Um, and by that I mean, in society, in day-to-day -day lives, anything can happen. Kidnappings happen all day, and this is really just to, to show that to the audience. Um, the imbalance of power between the kidnappers and the victim also shows the, the, it shows the broader social dynamics, and it highlights issues of control and exploitation throughout modern society. Um, there was also an impact on uh, another representation of social issues was the impact on marginalized communities. While the characters were not completely explored deeply in the story, and I completely understand that it was intentional, their actions and interactions reflect broader societal issues, including the disproportional, disproportionate act impact of violence on marginalized communities. So for the second question, my product would engage with audiences, well first off, because I created a gripping storyline with 
the unexpected twists and turns, which keeps the audience on the edge of the sheet and um, in turn keeps them wanting to watch more. That's, that's the whole point of the intro sequence, to keep them watching and entertained. I also incorporated elements of mystery and intrigue to encourage viewers to speculate on what was going to happen next throughout the story, as well as let them, um, you know, speculate what's further to happen on the entire movie, because this is an intro sequence. There are also auto, audio techniques that I use, such as things like the heartbeats. Um, they were very subtle, however, there's heartbeat audios that I use that um, I strategically placed to foreshadow tense moments and evoke fear uh, for the audience and just create that buildup of suspension. And with that sound design, I also, like while aiming to, to heighten that suspension and create a sense of unease, um, it drew the audience deeper into the narrative with those, those sharp sounds and loud, uh, very, very disturbing sounds. There was also character engagement, how, like, despite the limited character development, uh, each character's actions and reactions contributed to the overall tension and atmosphere. And what I mean by that is, even the driver, um, he was very, very serious and stern, and he didn't let off much information. Same for both of the, the kidnappers, they were very cut off, and I think that's what evokes the fear throughout the thriller and the story as well. Uh, subtle visual cues and body language was also used to convey the motion and motivation, um, which allowed the audience to empathize with the character's fight. So for distribution as real media text, um, I first tailor marketing campaigns to specific audience segments interested in suspense and thriller genres. I'd also utilize social media platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram to um, tease the suspenseful moments and generate buzz around the film overall. There's also cross-promotional opportunities within this, such as partner, partner, partnerships with related brands or products even, to cross-promote the film and research new audiences that want to um, delve into this thriller genre. Explore tie-in merchandise or experiences that completed the themes of the film and enhanced the, audience. the audience's engagement were also explored in, in this, uh, in this intro, intro sequence. Um, I also hosted virtual screenings. I also I also could host virtual screenings or live questions um, with the cast and crew to engage the fans with this uh, suspenseful thriller and deepen the connections to the film, uh, developing a bigger audience and more connected audience. And I also create interactive experiences um, or even games to immerse audiences into the world of film and extend the engagement beyond just traditional viewing of screens and movie. And I think that would really um, latch onto an audience and create something strong. 